Welcome to the second in a series of four screencasts on the prevention of food waste in the hospitality and food service sector. I'm Addie Dennis from RAP, working on the Hospitality and Food Service Agreement. In this screencast, I'll be introducing some simple actions businesses can take to identify and realise the cost savings potential from preventing food waste. This screencast lasts about 15 minutes. RAP has carried out extensive sector-wide research that shows that each tonne of food waste will typically cost a business somewhere between £1,700 and £4,000, with the average cost of food waste in the hospitality and food service sector being £2,800 per tonne. So it's clear that there is significant potential for making cost savings. To work out what potential cost savings a business can make, it's important to know how much waste is being produced during day-to-day -day operations. So this screencast focuses on undertaking a food waste review to understand how much food is being wasted. To do this, you need to look at measuring and monitoring the waste produced at each operational stage, and then using this data to identify the best opportunities to take action and make cost savings. RAP's experience of working with businesses has shown that undertaking a food waste review can achieve significant cost savings and the results can be used to set targets for food waste reduction and to help develop initiatives to prevent food waste. Undertaking regular food waste reviews can highlight new opportunities to make savings as catering operations change over time. It's a simple and practical process which can be integrated into the operations of a busy kitchen and all staff, managers, chefs, kitchen porters and waiters should be encouraged to join in. The review should take place over a typical business period that includes busy times such as weekends. Waste content and volume may also change with the seasons and with changes in menus, so the reviews should be repeated at regular intervals. For the food waste review to be effective, all staff involved in the day-to-day -day catering operations should be made aware of what the business is aiming to achieve and what needs to be done. So it's important for staff communications to take place at the start and make sure all kitchen and waiting staff understand what their roles are and how their actions can contribute towards preventing waste. Their contribution will increase when they understand the benefits of the changes being made and are made to feel a part of it. It's also a good idea to appoint a waste monitor to ensure that food waste is being separated, weighed and recorded correctly. So let's take a look at how mapping food waste can build a picture of where, when and why waste is generated. To measure how much is being produced, the first step is to segregate the food waste into three waste streams. Waste bins will be needed to collect spoilage waste from purchasing and storage, kitchen preparation waste and customer plate waste, the leftovers. Some caterers may only need spoilage and prep waste bins if they don't actually have any eating customers on site, such as caterers. Using clearly labelled coloured bins makes it easy for staff to identify what type of waste they should be putting into each bin. In this example, yellow bins are used to collect waste from spoilage, blue to collect preparation waste and black to collect customer plate waste. The objective is to measure the different waste streams by weighing or counting the number of bins produced. Food waste can be heavy so it's worth using a container that can be lifted easily and safely. Kitchens are busy places, so another important factor in helping staff to put the right waste from the different catering stages in the right container is to position them in the most practical location according to the layout of operations. Depending on the amount of space available or the size of the establishment, it might be the case that more than one bin is needed to collect the same type of waste. Clear labels or posters will also be needed to provide instructions for staff and these should be clearly displayed in all food preparation and disposal areas. Food waste typically arises from spoilage during storage, during meal preparation and customer plate waste. RAP's research shows the amount of each type of waste currently being generated is significant, but there are lots of opportunities and approaches that you can use to reduce it. The amount of waste being generated on the customer plate is approximately 312,000 tonnes a year. That's equivalent to around £875 million each year, which simply isn't good business sense. Businesses may be surprised by how much money they're throwing in the bin each week. So what do I mean when I talk about spoilage? Spoilage is anything from the kitchen that's gone off or has been contaminated and is unusable, including items such as melted butter or mouldy bread. Most fresh produce, like fruits and vegetables, spoil or degrade over time. 
so it's important to get frequent deliveries of fresh produce and avoid over-ordering stock. Food orders from fresh ingredient suppliers may also contain spoiled or damaged items, or some may not be as fresh as required and may spoil more quickly. It's always worth checking over the full order before accepting it. Spoilage can also occur from ingredients not being stored correctly, perhaps from poor packaging and cross-contamination, or storing at the incorrect temperature and humidity. Finally, if there isn't a good stock control process in place, then ingredients may end up being wasted because they've passed their use-by dates. Preparation waste is any leftover foodstuff that is wasted during the preparation of customer meals. Some of it will be unavoidable, such as eggshells or potato peelings. But even so, it's useful to record this information for future plans to dispose of food waste via composting or anaerobic digestion. This type of preparation waste typically includes meat and fish trimmings and vegetable peelings. There are many examples of where these trimmings can be used as ingredients for other meals. Opportunities that can make the most of preparation waste will be looked at in more detail in Screencast 3. Preparation waste also includes any food spoiled during preparation such as burnt toast, as well as meals cooked for customers that don't get served, such as leftover carvery at the end of service. Customer plate waste is the food that customers haven't eaten, and it's usually a consequence of either the portion size being too large or because there's something they don't like. Meals that are returned to by the customer untouched also contribute to customer plate waste. This might be because the meal served didn't match what the customer ordered or their expectations. Food waste data will need to be collected over a suitable period of time to give a true reflection of the business practices. This will largely depend on the size of the catering operation. Sometimes recording the number of waste containers filled in a full day will be enough, but it may be more appropriate to measure the waste over a shift pattern. The measurements will then need to be repeated at regular intervals over several weeks so that the impacts of ingredients coming out of storage and any menu changes can be captured. Measuring the amount of waste produced over two weeks also enables data to be captured on quieter and busier days. Bins can be weighed using a simple set of weighing scales. Luggage or fishing scales only cost a few pounds and are perfect for this type of measurement. To help record the amount of food waste being generated, RAP has developed a waste tracking sheet which can be downloaded from the RAP Online Resource Centre. The tracking sheet is structured so that the waste can be recorded by either weight in kilograms or by volume in litres, and it provides the necessary volume to weight conversion factors to make it easy to convert between the two. The results of these measurements will give the starting point or the baseline, and it's against this baseline which the impact of changes in day-to-day -day practices can be measured. Keeping a record of these results will enable a business to compare equivalent data from future reviews so that progress can be monitored. To ensure like-for-like -like waste data is compared, the data may need to be normalised, and this can be done by dividing the quantity of waste by the number of covers or meals served. This is key to working out what waste and cost savings have been made, and it's useful for setting meaningful key performance indicators, or KPIs for short. As part of the measurements, it's useful to monitor what type of food is returned on the customer's plate. If there's a large amount of a particular meal being returned, it could indicate that the portion size is not quite right or there's a particular issue with it. Waiting staff may have picked up some customer feedback and might be able to help determine the reason why it was uneaten. It may even highlight that the menu design needs revisiting. An example of return plate waste is salad garnishes. These are commonly served but often not eaten. An opportunity here may be that the garnish is replaced with an offer of a separate order of side salad. A record of what is being returned can be maintained by noting down each type of food as it's returned, listing each of the dishes and recording a notch or mark every time a particular food type is returned is a quick and easy way of doing this. And this type of record is simple for staff to complete in a busy environment. The results from the food waste measurements will show how much each waste is being generated at each of the operational stages. They help to determine what should be tackled as a priority and how much a business can realistically expect to save if they change specific practices. For example, if the spoilage rate is high, is the stock overordered? Are deliveries frequent enough? Can the stock control system be improved? During preparation, is food being overproduced or spoilt, maybe burnt? If a lot of plate waste is being returned by customers, can the portion size be adjusted for different types of customers? Are there any issues with certain types of meals? And if so, can waiting staff provide any insights into the likely issues? 
Looking at the underlying causes as to why the waste is being generated will help to identify the opportunities for preventing it. Elior, a leading contract caterer, has seen some great benefits from undertaking a food waste review. They found the approach very straightforward to implement and staff put waste into separate bin bags throughout the day. They initially had a system in place to monitor food wastage, but it recorded waste by cost rather than by weight. By switching to weighing the waste, Elior found more waste was being produced than they'd realised. Improving its monitoring system helped Elior to identify where most food waste was occurring and consequently the opportunities for prevention. For example, it became obvious that food preparation techniques could be adjusted to improve efficiency. As a result, the chef manager organised a training session to demonstrate the best way to prepare fruit and vegetables for minimum wastage. Staff were keen to participate and they suggested many ideas that could make use of items that were previously underutilised, such as cooking parsnip peelings to make soup. Staff found the use of clear bags during an initial monitoring tile particularly useful when separating food waste as this allowed them to see the volumes produced and exactly what went into the bags. This made an enormous difference to their awareness of what food was being wasted and they also learned that some of the items being disposed of during the preparation could be used in other dishes. As part of Elior's menu planning and stock control, they consider what's in season and substitute menu items where they're likely to be expensive or difficult to source. For example, when a drought affected cauliflower yields, they replaced the cauliflower with broccoli. To help prevent customer plate waste, Elia also posted signs in staff canteens to raise awareness of food waste. As we're coming to the end of this screencast, I want to provide you with a few web links for some of the free online support and advice that you can find on our website. These suggest some quick and easy ways of cutting down on food waste costs. The Online Resource Centre offers some simple top tips on preventing waste within the operations of a typical commercial kitchen. The Hospitality and Food Service Info Finder has a huge amount of practical and proven advice and supporting guidance. Essentially, it's a search and find tool which allows users to find the information most relevant to them. So whether a restaurant wants to learn more about cutting waste from the customer plate or a hotel wants to see what others are doing, this is the place to look. And if a business is thinking about recycling food waste, we've got the Food Waste Recycling website with information, advice and tools to help them make it work. Well, that brings us to the end of Screencast 2. Now that you've seen where food waste arises and how food waste can be measured and tracked, I really encourage you to view the next screencast in the series, Screencast 3, which shares some more great examples of how businesses are making changes to prevent and reduce food waste and how this is translating into real cost savings. If you have any queries or you'd like to find out more, please don't hesitate to get in touch by emailing hafs at rap.org.uk. Thank you for listening and don't forget any business can sign up to the Hospitality and Food Service Agreement.